Hey everyone and welcome to this Friday, August 23rd edition of Freight Waves Now. We got a big show for you today. We got Jesse Cohen talking about airports. Kevin Hill's gonna give us our AT&T business care update, but first up is Donnie Gilbert gonna tell the brokers what to think about this weekend. Thank, Donnie? You, thank you, Zach. So over the past uh, couple weeks through August, we've seen outbound tender ejection rates for reefers kind of on a steady path growing. We're up to around about 11%. So today I brought our uh, map showing the different tender ejection rates per the markets across the U.S. I see a lot of blue right here, Donnie. That's, that's <laughs> we have a lot of blue in the middle. We'll start out though here on the East Coast. In the Northeast, we have a market, Allentown, with reefer tender ejection rates. They've grown up to about 10% which is very impressive because the Northeast has struggled a lot. We've seen reefer tender rejection rates, you know, below 1%, 1%, 2%, and they've really, really struggled. So, you know, brokers have, you know, you know hopefully taken advantage of this, have helped move these uh, carriers from the Northeast to markets that are stronger, either, you know, back in the, in the summertime down to the Southeast when produce season was in full swing, and now a good market's actually the Midwest. Uh, kind of really just kind of east of the Midwest is kind of one of those markets that's, you know, is, is it the south, is it the northeast, is, you know, Virginia. Uh, <laughs> nobody fights over Virginia, but Roanoke has a tender rejection rate of about 16% right now. Wow, that's high. Very yeah. elevated yeah. for a Virginia market. For sure. So, yeah, so this is a market that, you know, don't count this market out. Be sure and, you know, definitely dive in and check it out. Moving over, the Midwest has grown a lot on their tender rejection rates for reefer. So demand for reefer is exploding right now in it's the Midwest. picking up in the yeah. Midwest. It's one of the markets that you know we've seen uh, here in the Northeast struggling, the Southeast is struggling, the Midwest is picking it up right now. Ohio, we have tender rejection rates between 11 and 14%. Indianapolis, we're moving over to about 17% in the Indianapolis market. Terre Haute, Indiana, 10%. So wow. here, you know, we're all these, in the last week or two, all these markets are starting to pick up for reefers. So if you're looking for reefer, you know, to bid reefer, you need to up your bids in these markets. Moving to the middle here, all this blue, you got uh, Arkansas up to Iowa, you got tender rejection rates from 35%, almost up to 50%. So those markets are still very strong for reefer demand. Uh, the contract, the spot market's well above the contracted rates for those areas. So if you're bidding freight in the, here in the, what we call, I call this the poultry belt, you know, a lot of right. chicken, a lot of uh, turkey <laughs> products come out of this area, you really need to increase your rates. <clears throat> Moving on over here to Salt Lake City, Salt Lake City is running about an 18% tender rejection rate right now. And this is a market that you really need to keep an eye on because we're gonna start having potatoes being harvested in Idaho coming here in the end of August and the beginning of September. They're already starting to harvest them, I think, aren't yeah, they? So yeah, so here that's gonna pull, you, you have uh, reefer carriers run into Salt Lake City because that's where they're going to have the deliveries at and then they're going to move their uh, equipment north and here I believe it's about you know 90 100 miles just to the Idaho line mm -hmm. from Salt Lake City so they're not too far away and then they'll pick up their products there and then of course they're going to take potatoes all across the U.S. Right on. Up into Spokane, Washington, we're about 23%. You know, we've had the apple season spiking here in Spokane, so it's been a very high reefer demand in that area too. So, and you know, reefers can get tight in the Northeast at this time of period, you know, this period of time. So definitely check your rates and increase your bids in those areas. Moving on down to California, California is back down to, you know, one and a half, two percent. But Fresno, the Fresno market, it's up to about six percent. It's not showing in blue or not, but you know, that's kind of, you know, it's a weaker area right now, but we do have a 6% in Fresno. All right on. So there you have it, brokers. Increase those margins in those hot areas. Welcome to Freightways weather for your Friday. Hope you've had a great week so far. We've had lots of severe storms here and there across the country this week, and that'll be the story again for today. They're not going to be severe everywhere, but we'll have scattered storms from the Rockies all the way out to parts of the East Coast and across parts of the Gulf Coast as too. And in any particular spot, they could be dropping heavy rain at certain points, and there'll be some gusty winds. But the two parts of the country, the two regions where we could see particularly intense or severe storms today will be across parts of the Rockies, at least near the front range from around Denver and parts of northwestern Oklahoma all the way up into the Dakotas into parts of Wyoming too, along the I-25 corridor and also portions of I-70 and I-80. That's where we could see just some particularly severe storms where the winds, winds might gust up to 60 miles an hour or greater. We could see some really large hail, maybe golf ball size in some spots. And there will be some problems with flash flooding. We've already seen that in parts of the Midwest and the Plains uh, this morning. And that's what we're going to talk about in just a minute. But first, the other area where we're going to see some severe storms today, out near the mid-Atlantic coast. So from Raleigh, Richmond, over to Norfolk, 
and also the Outer Banks, the Delmarva Peninsula, I-85 and I-95 corridors. That's the other kind of pocket of likely severe storms that we'll see today. Now we're going to talk about here in the middle of the country, right around northwestern Arkansas and Oklahoma, parts of southern Missouri as well. Storms have already caused flash flooding today, and there'll be, again, a particular threat for this part of the country today for some more flash flooding. Flash flood watches are up to at least the early afternoon hours, but they could be extended into later times. But as I mentioned earlier, storms in other parts of the country, even if they're not severe, could cause flooding, which may lead to uh, delays for drivers out there, especially on secondary roads and possibly some interstate ramps where they may have to close some of those areas off. Last thing we're going to talk about, Tropical Storm Ivo is still spinning out over the Pacific. Uh, it's about 450 miles southwest of the uh, tip of Baja, California, right here. Here's the storm out in the Pacific. Again, not a threat to uh, any assets on land, not really a threat to any people on land. Winds right now at about 60 miles an hour. It's gotten weaker overnight, so it's likely not going to turn into a hurricane. It'll probably get weaker over the next 24 to 48 hours as we head into the weekend. Uh, but for folks waiting for any ocean cargo to the West Coast, from over in Asia or that's coming through the Panama Canal. There could be just minor or short term, short term delays rather uh, from that ocean cargo because the vessels will have to steer around Ivo just to be on the safe side. That's a look at what you need to know for your Friday weather. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Have a great day, a wonderful weekend and be careful out there. Hey everyone and welcome to the AT&T Business Carrier Update. Kevin Hill is going to bring us some information about visibility. So Kevin, what you got for us today? Yeah, when, once we talk about vis visibility, a lot of times we think about where, you know, the shipper, right? The shipper wants to know where their freight is and right. they want to track their freight, but a lot of times visibility is about where your equipment is. So where's my trailer? So it can be used internally. And you're seeing more and more fleets adopt both G GPS tracking as well as certain monitoring systems, uh, temperature control for sure. refrigeration, but also tires and other things that go wrong with trailers. Now, you, you found some interesting information, and I'm going to be a little shocked here because yes. I cannot believe what you found in this survey. Explain well, what yeah, this is. So, so we surveyed carriers of all different sizes, and we found that almost half the fleets, just under 45%, have no GPS tracking on them. So, so they don't know where their trailers are at all. <laughs> they don't. It could be in Omaha, it could be in Dallas, it could be in Atlanta. I don't know, you know? So there's some carriers who track wow. that very well, some that, that don't. So, but you know, if you come back over here, 100% is less than, we're right at 20% actually. So about 20% of, yeah. of fleets have everything, and then you have everything in the middle. And once we go back to our next question, here we see the importance of monitoring your trailer, not just the location. So effectively, asset management questions. Asset, asset things, management. You know, maintenance yes. expenses are increasing. You know, the costs they are. are going up, and yes. visibility would help with that. So what are we seeing right here? So here are the biggest issues with trailers, right? And this is kind of what you would think: tires, right? This is the the, the biggest issue with everything: uh, <laughs> electrical lights, and then the brakes, of course. And for the reefer guys, you have refrigeration units. You know, and then on down to kind of here's really asset management, right? Monitoring your, your mileage right. and other diagnostics, weight tracking, kind of that's... Tires, tires though, that's always a big tires. line item. <laughs> it is a huge, yeah. <laughs> huge line item. Yeah. It, it definitely is. So everyone wants to monitor those tire pressures and also the tread. And that's actually where mileage comes in as well. You can use mileage data and weight data to, uh, to build models to tell you when your tire pressure That's a good point. could so be. You could actually get all this extra data and information from tracking exactly. your, your units and figuring out where some loss is. Exactly yeah. right. So, and be able to predict when you need to maintain or when you need to bring the trailer in for maintenance and, uh, and do some preventative, preventative diagnostics, right? you know, just like healthcare. Right on. So that, that could actually drive down your costs, also give exactly you visibility, right. and you could yeah. pass some of that along to your customer and make them happy, right? Of course. There definitely. we go. Yes. All right, Kevin Hill, thank you for the update. Improve your fleet's efficiency with AT&T Fleet Complete, a 4G solution for tracking vehicles and simplifying ELD compliance. AT&T Fleet Complete, delivering fleet solutions for every business.
All right, we got Jesse Cohen today talking to us about airport wait times. Jesse, thanks very much, that. Zach. So here at Freightways, we measure wait times for trucking at mm -hmm. 20 different major airports around the United States. And what we have today on our sonar chart is the composite average of those 20 airports, and it's a pretty noisy-looking chart. But in reality, if you look at the time, if you look at the times, you know we're really ranging from 60 up to 75 minutes. So it's a fairly compressed band. An hour to an hour and 15 minutes, or so. Hour to yeah. an hour and 15 minutes, mm -hmm. and this this chart goes back about a year and a half to uh, late February of 2018. And in general, you can see we haven't really changed the times that much. There's some ups and some downs. But in general, we haven't seen much falling off or much increase until right. very recently. But last year, 2018, was a record year for cargo. Robust year. Yeah. Very robust. And this year is much slower. Industry volumes are down 4, 5, 6 percent, and for some carriers, even more. But what we haven't seen with lower volumes is lower wait times. And that's a little bit of a surprise. And we think that what's going on is ground handlers are having to cut manpower, they're not replacing manpower in order to preserve their So margins. what's most interesting of late is the, is the spike to 74 minutes, which is really the highest time we've seen in the last 18 months. So let's get into the reasons behind that. So here today we have a, uh, a tree map chart uh, for those 20 airports, and this allows us to really see the breakdown. And what we have here on the upper left are the airports that have the highest wait times, and on the lower right, we have the airports with the lowest wait times. So Philadelphia, JFK, Denver, a lot of high wait, a lot of, a lot of delays at the airport. A lot of high wait times. Yeah. Typically, you get a lot of complaints in the industry about JFK, about Los Angeles, about Chicago, um, Atlanta to a certain extent. But those are big three airports. There's a lot of congestion, a lot of issues with wait and times. And they're all having increases. So what we're seeing here, which we believe is driving that 74 minutes, is all of the airports that have high wait times are getting worse. And this is compared to the last month. So here we have a month over month decline. They're all getting worse by a few minutes. Mm -hmm. And as a result, we've got that spike up to 74. Now, admittedly, 74 is probably not a bad number as compared with several other industries sure. that are in the United States where wait times may exceed two hours. But still within air cargo, which is a mode which shippers depend on for speed and for quick recovery, you know, this creeping up of wait times help to a certain extent it defeats the purpose of air cargo. So it's a concern. It's something, especially as we go forward into peak season, fourth quarter, and, and who knows what fourth quarter is going to be with, with tariffs and Brexit and threats of you know recession. Who knows how strong that's going to be? But typically volumes will will come up. And what will wait times do? Will we see them continue to stay the same? Or with higher weights, are we going to see a deterioration of wait times? That's really the concern going forward. And that's something we're going to keep our eyes on here at uh, Freightways, at Freightways.com, and we're going to socialize with the uh, air cargo industry. All right, very good, Jesse. All right, thanks for watching today. Uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button and follow us on all our social media, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and everybody have a great weekend.